may be seated. Again, we welcome to our pulpit today, uh, Mr. Stephen Ricker. Stephen, preach the word. Thank you, brother. Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. It is, uh, for me, a joy and a blessing to be here this morning with you, and I thank God for the privilege to look at the scriptures and study them and fill our hearts with them so that we may go forth and not sin against him. Uh, I wish my family could be here with me this morning, but uh, they had uh, another engagement up in northeast Philly, so I dropped them off this morning and and came down here to, to be with you. On this Memorial Day, I thank God for the freedom that we have in this country to come together and worship Him. And I realize that many, many have given their lives, they've given their blood so that we would have that freedom in this country. And though we see that our freedoms are being taken away, we must still strive to follow our Lord Jesus Christ And even if the world were to come down on us, that we would continue loving him and trusting him. And as we think on this Memorial Day of all those who gave their lives, I thank God for those who truly gave the lives for the freedom. But I thank God for the freedom that we have in Jesus Christ. Faith in Jesus Christ gives us great freedom. And we who are in Christ have freedom for eternity. And so we can rejoice in our Lord Jesus Christ even though our freedoms are being taken away from us as we speak. I'd like to invite you to open up your Bible again to our passage reading this morning in Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1, verses 14 through 22. And today I'd like to talk about the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And that's how the gospel according to the Mark starts out. He starts talking about the gospel, the beginning of the gospel, and in this chapter 1 of Mark, we see that the forerunner of Christ came, John the Baptist, and he came and he was uh, preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. And many who heard him confessed their sins and they were baptized in the in the Jordan. But John the Baptist also said, there, There's one that cometh that is mightier than I, and he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost. John the Baptist fulfilled his mission. Because as we read this morning, we see that John was put in prison. And Jesus started his ministry of preaching. And as John the Baptist was, uh, was there at the river and Jesus came, Jesus was baptized and the heavens opened up and the spirit like a dove descended upon him. And there was also that great voice from heaven, that great voice that said, Thou art my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And God would like to say that about all of us, that he is well pleased seeing us complete the mission that he wants for us. He was well pleased of Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ was fulfilling his ministry. And he had approximately three and a half years to go before he would go to the cross of Calvary. 
and shed his blood for sinners who repent. And God the Father would like to say to us that he is well pleased with the mission that we're fulfilling. If the redeemed walk in the sanctified way, if us the redeemed live a sanctified life, if us the redeemed are fulfilling the mission that he has given us, he will say to us also, ye are my sons in whom I am well pleased. As we look at what happened after Jesus' baptism, he was driven into the wilderness. He was fasting 40 days. He was tempted by our great enemy, Satan. But he resisted. He resisted greatly and was victorious. And coming from that victory, he started preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. And I would like to ask you this morning, what has the gospel of the kingdom of God done for you? Think about that. What has the gospel of the kingdom of God done for you? Well, if you have truly repented from your sins and you have placed your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, that is evidence, evidence that God has done a work in you. It's evidence that you have heeded to the call to repent from your sins. When Jesus Christ started preaching about the kingdom of God, he said, the kingdom of God is a hand. And the words were, repent ye and believe the gospel. And so if you have re truly repented, Christ has done a regeneration, done the regeneration of your soul. And now, you are a new creature in Christ. If you placed your faith in Him, now you are following Him and you are grateful for that sacrifice that He did on the cross of Calvary. And now you also believe in His name, believe in His blood, Believe in the death, burial, and resurrection. And all that you believe is according to the scriptures. We believe it because God said it. And we are so blessed to have it in writing that we can see it. And believe it and proclaim it. And if the gospel of the kingdom of God has done a work in you, then you will truly follow Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And if you are following him, this means that the gospel of the kingdom of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ, has saved you from eternal damnations from your sins. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of God unto salvation to all those who believe. That's what Romans 1.16 tells us. It is the power of God. It is the power that wrought a miracle in you. And now that you have a regenerated soul and you have your eyes focused on your Redeemer, you are walking by faith and you have your eyes placed on Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of your faith. Now, God has a great mission for you. And this gospel of the kingdom of God 
is what we call the missionary gospel that makes fishers of men. Jesus Christ was the greatest missionary. He was the number one missionary. He came to this earth and he became flesh. God became flesh to be able to fulfill the number one mission so that we by faith could look at what he did for us on Calvary's cross, shedding his precious blood to wash us from our sins. Jesus Christ completed his mission and three, or three years, three and a half years approximately before fulfilling his, his mission, God the Father said he was well pleased. Jesus Christ fulfilled the mission as it was designed before he came. And if you have believed, and if you have truly repented from your sins, you are now on a mission. And that mission is to fish for the souls of men. And if the Holy Spirit dwells in you, He will walk with you, He will guide you, He will teach you, He will train you to be fishers of men. In Acts chapter 1 verse 8, we have a command. For all those who are truly, who truly have Christ in their hearts, that command is, ye shall be witnesses unto me. And that is our mission. Our mission in this world is to be a witness for Jesus Christ. The chief end of man is to glorify God and enjoy Him forever. And those who have Christ will enjoy Him forever, but as we walk on this sod, we have work to do. As we walk on this sod, we can't tell someone else to do the work that we're not willing to do first. And our job is to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ and be witnesses for Him, for what He has done for us. And we must do that continuously. But how do we get to do this mission continuously? In Mark chapter 1 verse 17, And Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me. He was calling men to follow him. And if you repent and you believe the gospel, he will make you to become fishers of men. When we have a new babe in Christ, they come to Christ through, uh, by grace through faith. And they start telling everybody, I'm a new creature. There's a joy in their heart. But they haven't learned how to go and proclaim the gospel yet. But if they have repented and believed the gospel, the Holy Spirit of God will make you to become fishers of men. I want you to notice the words, I will make you. The words, I will make you, it's not that God is a, is, is a dictator, an almighty dictator that is going to come down and grab us behind the neck and say, listen, I'm God and you're the, the creature and I'm going to make you do this work that I want you to do. God is not a dictator. God wants to work His will in us. 
And this, I will make you to become fishers of men, is showing us the will of God. But we must first be submissive to his will. If we love our Lord Jesus Christ, then we will be willing to serve him. We will be willing to follow him. He is our Savior. And he calls us to fulfill our duty. He gave his life. And now he wants us to serve him. We willingly serve our Lord Jesus because we love him. Because he gave himself for us. He paid for our sin. He took our place on the cross of Calvary. And because of that, we are to follow him and serve him and love him and have a zeal to fulfill his commands. We want to obey him. We should obey him. Sometimes we rebel against him. I remember in my life, I was working hard. I wanted to make money. I was building boats. And I wanted to have a successful company. And I love to go out sport fishing. I like to go deep sea fishing. And we would do that when, when I was in Jersey here in, in a youth. We used to go offshore and want to go fishing and we kept going farther out. We wanted to get the bigger fish. I started to learn how to fish and how, how I wanted to do that all the time. It was a, a sport. I just didn't go fishing one day and catch all the big fish. But I had to learn to become a fisher. But I was rebellious to God because I wanted to fulfill my will. I didn't want to fulfill His will. And as I walked along fulfilling my will, I had many trials and temptations, and I suffered because I was not fulfilling God's will. I thought I was doing good for God, but with my will in the way, I really couldn't please him with what I was doing. And I remember in 2005, we had gone to Korea to the ICCC uh, uh, Congress there. And we had traveled 13 hours, 14 hours. We got to hotel, 12 hours difference. And I slept two hours and then I woke up. I could not sleep. So I said, okay, I might as well read. I picked up my Bible and the, the, the theme verse for that Congress was Philippians 1.27. So I started reading Philippians again and when I saw Paul's words there, for me to live as Christ, it hit me that I really wasn't living for Christ. I wanted to fulfill my will. And that night, after a couple hours of reading, I couldn't sleep. I got on my knees and I asked the Lord to forgive me for not fulfilling His will, but looking to do my will. And I asked Him to lead me to fulfill His will. And I came back to the States and I was working and I was 
devoting more time to be in the Scripture. And six months from that date, I had an invitation to go to Peru for a Confederation of Evangelical Fundamental uh, Churches uh, meeting. And they asked me to, to speak. And they said, we had a Chilean pastor who was supposed to come but can't come, so can you please come? And it was a rush, and I said, okay, I'll come. I went there, and lo and behold, I met my future wife there at the Congress, but she wasn't supposed to be there either. Her mother had passed away of cancer. She was one of 12 children left. And her brothers and sisters said, we want to get her out of the town. And they, they asked her to go to the conference, and she said no. Finally, the night before they were supposed to leave and take a 20-hour bus trip, her brother came to her and said, Sister, I bought you tickets. Here they are. You must go with us because if not, we have to throw them away. And she accepted. But anyway, we both went to this Congress and we both were there. And at the end of the Congress, we, we changed emails, but there was nothing more than just uh, friendship talking between brother and sisters in Christ. And within a few months, the Lord started working in, in her and myself. To make a long story short, a year and a month later, we were married. Once we were married, we were married in March. In April, we were going to Guatemala to take my parents' place for six months while they came home on furlough because there wasn't anybody to take their place. There was a need. It was presented. I said, okay, we can go. I talked to my wife. Let's go. We went. And today, nine years later, we're still there. God had a purpose in our lives, and he put us there. But what he did, he took me away from sport fishing, deep sea fishing, and he put me in a place, and he made me a fisher of men. But I was willing. I had changed. God had changed me, had made me submissive to his will. And so, when, once I got to that point, God started working in my life and changing things and putting things in place that I didn't even think about. But He put me in Guatemala where I'm now serving and I'm so glad that I obeyed His call. Because if I didn't, I'd be miserable. And he worked in me to make, to make me become fishers of men. But he didn't do it forcefully. He worked in me and opened my eyes to what I was doing wrong. And so now, we're in Guatemala. And as we see what these men that God chose, these fishermen, when he called them, they left everything behind. And we see the apostles of Jesus Christ, they followed him, they left everything, and they never turned back. They never turned back, they kept following him. And the Holy Spirit used them in the New Testament church, the New Testament church grew leaps and bounds. There were many uh, souls saved. God used them as instruments. And he wants to use you and I, every single one of us, to be holy instruments in his vineyard. He wants to work in us. And as we become submissive to him, he wants us to keep the mission in the forefront of our minds that we go forward and that as we go forward that we will do it until the day of Jesus Christ 
It's not something that is temporary. All of us that are in Christ are missionaries. And whether you be here in Collingswood or in Guatemala or in China or Korea or in Africa, you have a mission to fulfill. And that mission is to be a witness. And God will use your witness to call men to repent from their sins. He will use you as a witness to take the gospel so, to others so those that are lost in sin will be able to come to Christ through the gospel because the gospel is the power of God unto salvation to all who believe. We must all be fulfilling this mission of fishing for souls of men proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ and giving them the gospel. And if you are willing, His grace will work in you to be able to fulfill that mission. The Apostle Paul stated in 1 Corinthians 15.10 and he was talking about that he, has, he was laboring abundantly but he made it clear that he was not laboring abundantly in his strength, but in God's strength. Once we're willing and able, God will uh, use his power in and through us to fulfill the mission. The Apostle Paul said, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. I labored more abundantly than they all. It seems like he was boasting. But he was just saying, God has given me the ability to do a lot of work. And his grace is empowering me to fulfill the mission. The Apostle Paul kept his focus on the cross of Jesus. And that's what he would talk about to others. He wanted them to come to repentance. He wanted them to uh, believe the gospel of the kingdom of God. God can use us if we are willing. If we are willing to be submissive to his will. God, is a, God in his word gives us many examples. And we see Jesus Christ. He had pity on the lost. Let us go to Matthew chapter 9. Verses 36 to 38. And as Jesus did, we are never to lose pity. We are to keep a burning passion in our hearts for the souls of men if we are fishing for them. But when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion on them, because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. As we look around today just in Collingswood and we see how many are lost, we see that there's a great need. And we say, well, I can't do it all, so we need more laborers. And when you see the need, that means that God is talking to your heart and saying, Come, I need you to work. If you see the need and you say, Oh Lord, please send laborers. What he's saying is, you have finally understood. You saw the need. Now I want you 
to fulfill your mission because you saw the need. If you see the need, God is calling you to be fishers of men. Samuel and Isaiah saw the need and they said, Here am I, Lord. Are you willing to do the same? Here am I, Lord. I'm willing to serve you right here. I'm willing to serve you wherever you would put me. If I submit myself to His, His will, I will say, Lord, here am I. Send me. Without us fulfilling the mission of preaching the gospel to every creature, letting them know that, the, that Jesus Christ and the gospel is so important so that they may hear it. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We know that the scriptures will work in their hearts and we must present the scriptures, the holy scriptures to them. And all we are is taking the good news. That is the gospel. The gospel is that Jesus is the Savior of the world and we need to offer Him to all who might listen. But God wants to use us to take this missionary gospel forward no matter where it is that we go. He wants to take us into all fields everywhere. But first, you must have the ear to hear His calling. Is He calling you today? Is He calling you to proclaim the gospel of the kingdom of God? The gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God? If he is, and you're willing to say, yes, Lord, here am I, he will empower you. And he will focus you to take every opportunity that you have to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. By the grace of God, my parents are still moving forward marching to Zion and I thank the Lord for the example that they are to me and my wife and that they don't stop they continue marching forward they don't give up and our mission is to do the will of the Lord fulfilling the mission that he's given us until the day of Jesus Christ. We have been put here and if by God's grace and mercy He's given you the gift of faith, now you have a great job to do because we have been put here for the Word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. And if he's made us kings and priests, he wants us to fulfill that work. So we have great power to work from, but we first must be willing. The preaching of Jesus Christ was simple. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Our message should be the same. Repent ye and believe the gospel. If you don't repent, what do you have to look forward to? Eternal separation from God, pain for your own sins in the lake of fire. We are to love souls 
and love them forever. We are to work until the Lord takes us home or we're raptured into the clouds to meet Him. What a glorious day that will be when we shall see our Savior face to face and be like Him. But until then, we have lots of work to do. Are you up to the challenge? Can you speak to everyone that you know and see? Will you take every opportunity that God gives you? To finish this morning, I'd just like to tell you a short story. I was on a flight leaving Tampa to Guatemala. It stopped over in Miami. And I had two rows behind the first class section of the, of the plane. And I could see this big man came into the airplane. And he's a well-known figure. To, I don't know for all of you, but he's a well-known figure in the, in the sports uh, circles. He's a wrestler. And his name is Hulk Hogan. He's a big man. Some of you all know him. But I said to myself, and I had a passport track in my pocket, and I said, as we're sitting down and putting all the things away, he was close that I could get to him, and just I wanted to give it to him, because I know he was a sinner in need of a Savior. And I said, well, no, I'll get him when I go out, on the way out. We landed in Miami. We got up, and certainly first class goes out first. But I knew I, I had a chance because I'm only second row. But when I got out, I looked for him to catch up to him. I could not see him. Someone must have been there in a the cart, picked him up, took him. But I, I lost an opportunity that I had. I didn't give him the good news of Jesus Christ. And sometimes we do that. We'll have the opportunity. We say, "No, no, no! I'll, I'll do that. I'll do that later." When we're presented with the opportunity, let us not put it off. Let us do the work that He's called us to do and fulfill the mission of proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ to every creature, calling them to repent and believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now that we are have become fishers of men, I hope that our focus will truly be on fishing for the souls of men, for Christ and for His honor and glory. As we go forward today, may we look that everyone out of the world is a big prize fish. And let's see if we can catch them and bring them to the feet of Jesus Christ. God will use us. God is going to draw them, but we must be willing to do the work for our God. May He help every single one of us to fish until the day of our Lord Jesus Christ for lost souls. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank Thee for Thy word of truth. We thank Thee for Thy word that purifies us. We thank You for Thy Holy Spirit who uses Thy word to change us, change our direction, to come into submission to Thee. We thank You, O Lord, for saving our souls and forgiven us of our sins and now making us fishers of men. We pray, O oh Lord, that you will work in each and every one of our lives today, that we will look for all opportunities and take all opportunities to present the gospel to those who are lost and dying, who are in total darkness, 
O Lord, use us for thy honor and thy glory. Give us the ability to speak and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ to every creature. We thank you for the patience that you have in us, in making us to become fishers of men. I pray, O oh Lord, that all of us here today have become fishers of men. Work in our hearts and minds and souls that we may honor and glorify you in all that we say and do and think. And we ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen.